and so they wanted that red. <coughs> Where are they at? <laughs> had something else on my mind. <coughs> uh, prayer request for Brother Clint McIntosh. He is in need of prayer. Uh, and Sister Rebecca also, she's staying home with him. He was uh, at the hospital. They took him to the hospital. Friday evening, and so he's standing in need of prayer. And there was someone else. Parker. Yes, let us remember Parker in prayer. Would there be any other special request? Sister? Let us remember them needs. Brother? Okay. All right. Let us remember that request. Sister? All right. Let us remember that need. Someone else? Sister? Someone else? Any unspoken request? Brother Turner, would you come up and take these needs before the Lord and pray over the service? I've been rejoicing in the Lord ever since I got up this morning. I was just telling some of them I usually, for years I put on my glasses as soon as I put my feet out of the bed. So I went to the bathroom without them this morning and I thought, well, I'm seeing pretty good. So I thought, well, I'll go on and fix my breakfast, eat, and I did that, took a shower and shaved. <laughs> and I thought, well, I'll just go ahead and drive to church without him. <laughs> so I put them on when I came in the door out there. I, I see everything good except the fine print and all that, so I thought, well. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, I had, I've had the feeling ever since he started dealing with me that way that he's just going to heal us a little at a time, most of us, you know, and just cause us to get better and better. And, and hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, this morning we're thankful in our hearts to be children of the Most High God, to be joined ours with Jesus Christ, our precious Lord that died for us and rose again. And Father, as we stand here this morning, Realizing, oh God, that you're perfecting a church that'll be glorious and without spot or wrinkle and without blemish. Oh Lord, it's such a precious thing to think about and to shout about. We thank you, Father, for the privilege of prayer this morning. Lord, we lift our voices on behalf of all of our brothers and sisters that are sick and suffering and tormented in various ways. We do certainly pray, oh Lord, that thou shalt bless this marriage between sister Rachel and I, I don't remember his name but Lord you know him dear God would you just be precious to each one dear Lord and help us this morning to yield ourselves unto thee and to remember Israel as we pray and, and give thanks to you for our own blessings we pray for Israel this morning oh Lord that they 
shall go ahead and do that thing with, we desire so much to see them do. And may the peace of Jerusalem be a short distance ahead. Thank you, Father, for our precious ministry that you've called for this hour of time. And for the truth that they bring to us, Lord, and the sure stand that they've taken against all unrighteousness and all unholy things that go on around about us. Father, we thank you for the way that they manage things in this place here, Lord, just to point us in the right direction that we might know what you approve of and what you don't. We give thanks this morning, dear Lord, and commit all things to you, asking, dear God, that you would anoint each and everything that's said or done, the singing and especially your servant as he comes to bring the message. In Jesus Christ's name, we commit it all to you and give thanks. Amen. Glory to your name, O Lord. Brother Richard Funk's birthday is today. Yesterday. Or was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. <clears throat> well, Jesus has a table spread where the saints of God are fed. He invites his chosen people come and die. With his manna, he doth feed and supplies our every need. Oh, the sweet to sup with Jesus all the time. Oh, come and dine, the Master calleth, come and dine. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Oh, he who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For the Master called to them, Come and die. There they found their heart's desire, bread and fish upon the fire. Thus he satisfies the hungry every time. Oh, come and dine, the Master calleth, Come and die. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Oh, he who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and die. Oh, soon the Lamb will take his bride to be ever at his side. All the host of heaven will assemble be. Oh, twill be a glorious sight, all the saints in spotless white, and with Jesus there will feast eternally. Oh, come and dine, the Master calleth, come and dine. Oh, we may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Oh, he who fed the multitude, turned the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and dine. The disciples came to land, thus obeying Christ's command. For the Master called to them, come and die. There they found their heart's desire, bread and fish upon the fire. Thus he satisfies the hungry every time. Oh, come and die, and the Master calleth, come and die. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Oh, you fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and die. Oh, come and die, the Master calleth, come and die. Oh, you may feast at Jesus' table all the time. Oh, he who fed the multitude, turn the water into wine. To the hungry calleth now, come and die. Well, I have found his grace is all complete. He supplieth every need. Oh, while I sit and learn at 
Jesus be. I am free, yes, free indeed. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found a pleasure I once craved. It is joy and peace with Thee. What a wondrous blessing I am saved from the awful ghosts of sin. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of Glory in His joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the Savior's presence is so near. I can see His smiling face. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Well, I have found that hope so bright and clear, living in the realm of grace. Oh, the press, presence is so near. I can see His smiling face. Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory, full of glory, full of glory. It is joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. Well, I have found the joy no tongue can tell How its waves of glory flow It is like a great overflowing well Springing up within my soul Oh, it is joy unspeakable and full of glory Full of glory, full of Glory in His joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, the half has never yet been told. I'd like to give a little testimony this morning. I still have as our rises and tendonitis, but I can lay my head down to sleep and I can sit in the chair. And I don't feel none of those sharp pains anymore. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. Yes, 
Father is welcome in this place. Praise the Lord. All right, you may be seated. Brother Jimmy and Sister Sandy, would you have a song for us? Then how about Brother Mark and Sister Tilly after that? From where he ascended, an angel of the Lord declared that it would be. He said, Don't stand there breathing, for the one that you see leaving, friend like man, is coming back for you. Oh, the way. And I believe. 
for that. All right, if you all would come on, then how about Brother Dwayne after that? Okay, you can't. Uh, Brother Steve and Sister Elsie and Sister Beth, would you have a song after that? I'd never see it through They don't know what keeps me going Guess they never have met you All my life was in shambles Till the day you came along You turned my tears into laughter And you gave me a brand new song I'm still holding on Lord, I'll never let you go You gave me a smile You touched my heart, you touched my soul all the bridges left behind me Lord, I've burned them to the ground I'm still holding on You're the best friend I ever found Folded like not to prosper with that hanging o'er my head you'll never amount to nothing that's what most people say well I've been known to be young Settled. Never stayed around too long To the treasure I've been searching for And I'm still holding on I'm still holding Lord, I'll never let you go You gave me a smile You touched my heart, you touched my soul All the bridges left behind me Lord, I burn them to the ground. I'm still holding on. You're the best friend I ever found. for that all right if you all would come on then how about brother Kevin and sister Sandy after that
haven't heard, we have the brochures for the EO trip for Israel, if you're interested in picking with those up and look at them. And also tonight, after the service, there'll be a short meeting for any questions of the people that has not went last year. Or if you went last year and have more questions, we'll try and answer those quickly after the service tonight. Help us sing this. Oh, I want to see him. I tell you, watch the you watch the news, and of course, a lot's on Israel. But man, that is just a tip of the iceberg of what's going around this world. There are so much killing and murdering all over the world, and these factions and different things, and let alone what happens in our own country. It's there's no hope except to see him. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, pointing souls to Calvary through that crimson glow, many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on through him I must win. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. Of his saving grace on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. Satan's snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside. But my Lord goes ahead, leave whatever be time. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When in valleys low I look toward the mountain high, and behold the Savior there leading in the fight, with a tender hand outstretched toward the valley low. Guiding me, oh, I can see as I onward go. Oh, I want to see him, oh, look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. When before me billows rise from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my bark, he does safely keep, and he leads me gently on from the world below. He's a real friend to me, oh, I love him so. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, oh, let me lift my voice. Cares all past, home at last, ever to rejoice. Thank you all for that. All right, Brother Kevin, Sister Sandy. Then how about Brother David and Sister Tina and Sister Olivia after that? <clears throat> it's good to be here this morning and feel the presence of the Lord and we just thank him for everything and most of all for saving our soul and <clears throat> just the uh, privilege to know the truth of God's word. I just thank him this morning. 
and it's good to be here. I love each and every one of you. Well, I started out to win this race, to serve the Lord, and to look up on His face. Well, the way. I've got my mind made up Hallelujah I've got my foot on the rock And my mind's made up Oh, I walk through the lonesome valley And I drink from the bitter cup When the devil comes around me Trying to show me an easier way I stay right flat on my feet I throw my head in the air I look him straight in the eye And say my Foot's on the rock, yes, it's made up. Well, I've got my foot on the rock, and my mind's made up. Though I walk through the lonesome valley, and I drink from the bitter cup, when the devil comes around me, trying to show me an easier way, I stand right flat on my feet. I throw my head in the air, I look him straight in the eye and say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up now the devil he will tempt you he'll fill your way with strife he'll make you sick and tired even try to take your life but just turn unto my jesus say lord i've had enough he'll say move over satan he's got his mind made up I've got my foot on the rock and my mind's made up Though I walk through the lonesome valley and I drink from the bitter cup When the devil comes around me trying to show me an easier way I stand right flat on my feet I throw my head in the air I look him straight in the eye and say my Foot's on the rock, and my mind's made up. Now Job was a man, he was tempted in every way. The devil took his cattle, his children in one day. His wife then came and said, Curse God, you've had enough. Oh, but he said, you talk like a foolish woman. I've got my mind made up. I've got my but on the rock and my mind's made up though i walk through the lonesome valley and i drink from the bitter cup when the devil comes around me trying to show me an easier way i stand right flat on my feet i throw my head in the air i look him straight in the eye and say my foot's on the rock and my mind's made up Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, you all may be seated. All right, if you all will come on. Give me your hand, let's agree together, together that all of our enemies will flatter our feet. For whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven at the name of Jesus. Satan has to flee. We've got the power in the name of Jesus. The power in the name of the Lord. Those 
Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got the power in the name of the Lord. For many years now, Satan's tried to stop us, but the church of Jesus is still alive like a mighty army we keep marching onward winning every battle with the Lord by our side we've got the power in the name of Jesus we Sister Michelle. Faith begins. 
falls apart. Praise His name, and when you have a broken heart, raise your hands and say, Lord, you're all I need. You're everything to me, and you'll take the pain away. When it seems you're all alone, just praise His name. And when you feel you can't go on, raise your hands and say, Greater is He that is within me. You can praise the hurt away. Columbus, Indiana, for school. I'm going to dental assisting school at Ivy Tech, and uh, I'm scared. <laughs> Never been far away from mom and dad, and you know I, I want to be here for church. And you know, so many people have offered, "Oh, I'll meet you here and take you to rest away to church. You could stay the night at my house, and you know, if you need someone, call." And you know, we went over finances and. You know, I thought I had $11 a day, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, you know, I can't live on $11 a day. <laughs> um, and, you know, Brother Bud preached a message Thursday, you know, peace in the time of trouble, and I thought, oh, my gosh, was he in my bedroom yesterday when I was freaking out about this? Because I was just freaking out about this. You know, and then we sang praise his name, and, you know, I just feel God's trying to say, hello, I'm talking to you. <laughs> Trust in me. And, uh. You know, I just felt just up here, okay, I'm yours. <laughs> Talk to me. I know you're with me. I know you wouldn't have opened this door to do it in all assisting if this was not your will. And I feel like it is his will. And I'm so thankful that I'm here and that I'm not out in the world and that I'm not confused. You know, so many people in my family have tried to confuse me. And I've just been prayed about it. I've talked to mom and dad about it. But... I know that it's with you two. You two care for me. You two love me. And if you didn't love me, I wouldn't, I mean, I don't know. I wouldn't be here, but I know that you two love me and you two care about me. You two want to see me get home. 
And you all want to see me get home because I want to see all you. You all are my family. And I'm with this church 110%, 210%, every percent of me I have. And I just thank all of you for being here. And bless you all. Thank you all for that, and thank each one of you for your songs. I look forward to what the Lord has for us this morning. And I'll turn the service over to Brother Allen at this time. Well, praise the Lord this morning, everybody. I'm glad for the glad for the presence of the Lord. Without that, we would just be another organization of which that we do not desire to be that, and we would just be what we fought against. But I praise the Lord this morning that uh, that young people can trust in us and that we can see each other as brothers and sisters let us pray heavenly father lord you see each soul you know each need lord the very you're the very present help in the time of need and trouble we pray now lord your blessings upon each one upon this congregation and the congregation around the world, Lord, that's gathered about your word. May you bless your children here and other places. I thank you for this number that is here today, and I pray that each one would be included in your great number. Lord, whenever the bride is made up may you just be help each one of us to be in that number because whenever the saints go marching in Lord bless your people now your children guide and lead and move in this service as you see fit let me Lord just get out of the way and let you work and may you be with us in this service here this morning. And be with those that are to be baptized. Lord, may your hand be upon them. And help them, Father. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Brother Bud. I'll try not to overstay this morning we got several to be baptized and we want to respect that there are different ones to be baptized or different ones to be rebaptized And let me let me just say this morning if 
you're re- being rebaptized and that you have feel the need to do so, that something has come up in your life that you realize you need that. If you want something to happen in your life, you give yourself to the Lord. It won't always be like this. This opportunity will not always be available because the door will be shut sometime in the near future. And if you need to get rid of something, let me, let me, let me say this. The devil is going to tempt you because as it tempted Jesus, but the temptation is not sin. It's when we yield to that temptation. That's what makes it sin. And uh, I'm not suggesting everybody be rebaptized because I don't believe that. But I am saying this morning if there's been something in your life that you feel that you you've not lived up to the standard of Christianity then that's up to you I'm not going to beg anybody to be baptized but the water is here and really I don't want this to just be a long drawn out thing every Sunday because if you realize you need it go ahead and get it done and I I appreciate the ones that are being baptized and all but I just had to say a little something on that line this morning that uh, just because some thought has run through your mind and all that That's not sin. It's when we act on it. And when we cultivate it. And when it becomes a possession of us. Because the thing about it is the devil works on your mind. And just because that he does don't mean you're sinned. You've sinned. Because he'll always do that. But as I said a while ago, it's when we yield to it. Uh, just a thought runs through your mind is not sin, but whenever it becomes, it's something we resist. We must resist the devil. In order for him to flee from us and the grace of God will take over and will become stronger and stronger until the devil is going to know that that what we stand for is right and that we're not going to yield to his temptations. Uh, Jesus had temptations, but he didn't yield to it. I mean, whenever the devil met him there on the mountain, he he resisted him over and over because these were thoughts that were brought against him. If you be the Son of God, just like it is this morning, if you be a Christian, if you be a follower of Christ, and then look at yourself, And thank the Lord for what He has done for you and what He's brought you out of and what He's doing in your life. Give Him glory for that and and the devil can't stand glory to God. Because that's that's when He has to move over. And if I can express anything to you on that line this morning is... You resist the devil and, and, and it's not going to be long till 
the things that have bothered you won't bother you. Because James says that. And we need, we need that conquering spirit. Because in Ephesians, there when it, where it talks about taking the whole armor of God, then that is taking these different layers of elements that He has given us to fight the warfare. I mean, He didn't give it to everybody. He gave it to individuals. He didn't give it to us as a whole. He gave it to us as individuals because the devil is going to attack us as individuals. I mean, he does attack the church at times. He attacks the congregation. But he's a loser. He, he, lo he lost... At Calvary. And from that, uh, from that time on, there's an overcoming spirit. Well, that's what I had to say about that. I'm still on the same subject. But I just, uh, before I go into it, I'm just thinking this morning about how many things, even they talked on the news. There's six major things, as they said, and I'd say that maybe seven or eight major things that are going on right now. That our government is uh, getting into. There's that health care thing. That, 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 that is a monster. And I, I'm, whenever I say that, that's, that's an ugly monster. And there, then there is what's going on, on in Gaza. What's going on at our border. They claim that uh, ISIS is even coming across our border. These, these American stupidities are going to Syria and other places to become part of the ISIS. As far as I'm concerned, they deserve the same thing that anybody that lives that way deserves. Get rid of them. That ISIS thing that is over there killing all those innocent people, I could tell you how to, I could tell the president what to do. Bomb the thing. Get rid of it. Well, you've got enough air power to do something about it. You say, well, you're preaching hate. No, the Bible preaches hate if I am. You don't, you don't put a band-aid on cancer. It gets to where it's untreatable, you've got to cut it out. And then there's what's going on in Afghanistan. What's going on in Chechnya. Brother, sister, this, this world's in turmoil. And there's no answer to it. But the coming of the Lord. I mean, He'll, he'll answer it. He's going to, first of all, He's going to take His saints out of here. Before that He brings judgment. They're going to be different things just like 
just like this Ebola thing. They don't have no treatment for it. They've got something they think going to help, but but it's just increasing pestilence, which is contagious diseases. We're living in that time. We're at the end, there's no, no doubt about it. Even a man on the street ought to be able to see that, but you take street people anymore, don't even know who the president is. And people that go vote, just vote for what's going to help them. They don't care who it is. And I don't, I don't know myself who's going to do anything. They said, fellow down in Kentucky, Rand Paul. He said a couple of years ago, take all funding for Israel. Now he's saying fund them because he is getting up in the polls. I never saw anything like it. Just the way the wind blows, this is the way we go. And I tell you, it's, it, it can't be that way in the ministry. We have got to put up a standard and stand by it. I'm not talking about meanness. I'm talking about truth. God has something for us at the end of the road. And as I look over this congregation this morning, brother, sister, the joy of the Lord was in the camp. And I don't want to take that away. So today, I won't go to the Scripture. Twelfth chapter of the book of Hebrews. I'm going to be dealing in Hebrews some this morning. You know, when 9-11 happened, for three weeks there, people started going to church. And it looked like that something was going to happen in America. There the president st stood up on the upon the rubbles of what had just happened. He made a, made a great speech. But it never was followed through. And for, for three weeks people went to church, but there was no repentance. Nobody got right with God. A few days after that happened, they had a, a big meeting in a big church. The presidents, the former presidents were there, and here you had all these so-called religionists. Which included the Muslim, whatever you call them. I got it on my tongue, but I can't get it off. That was the ones that done it.
We're going to have a big meeting, but we're going to invite the ones in that's caused the trouble. President began to say, Muslimism is a peaceful religion. Look at it today. Can you still repeat that, Mr. Bush? Some time back, 20 out of 22 wars that were going on was concerning Muslimism. You can't, you can't have a meeting and invite the devil in. Amen. Somewhere he's, he's got to be stopped at the door. And I believe that this morning. I believe the more that we dedicate ourselves to the Lord, the more the devil is going to feel left out Amen. and pushed out. Amen. If we if we are going to be, and I believe we are going to be the church of the living God here in this last day, we're going to have to be dedicated. From the highest to the lowest. And this has got to be at home. And this has got to be on the street or wherever we're at. Where we're going to have to be lights. Lights in a dark place. It's not something that you turn on a button and there it is. It talks about lifting up the weak. I believe I believe that but it can't be a drag on everybody else When you come to the altar for prayer leave it there And whenever we leave it there, then we will go away with a different attitude. Being born again is not everybody not going to run. But the peace of God. <clears throat> the peace of God that's beyond understanding will come over us. It can be a shout. It can be a cry. Whatever it is to you this morning... Let it happen. Don't come up here expecting something that somebody else has. Come up expecting that you're going to receive whatever God has for you. I believe we'll get to the place before it's over with 
that it was like it was with Paul. In the 19th chapter of the book of Acts, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? We don't know whether there be anything like that or not. We don't know whether there be any Holy Ghost. Well, how were you baptized? It's not how many times you were baptized, but how were you baptized? Unto John's baptism. Paul didn't down John. He said, John truly baptized you with water unto repentance. But let me tell you something else. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And whenever they did, they laid their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. America today has had everything just given to her and given to her and this gets into our minds. They claim that if you take the message of healing unto Africa, they receive it because they're simple. In the bush country, they haven't been, they haven't been indoctrinated. Of course, you can you can receive uh, you can receive healing and still be lost. But if you receive salvation, you're saved for eternity. Because I was asked a question. What about the eternal age? You don't have to worry about the eternal age. You get eternal, li eternal life and you are in your eternal age. And you're a part of the great Creator. You are. Because the Creator gives you a part of Himself. Which is life. <clears throat> Nicodemus. You know, you know, he went looking for something else. But he got something different than what he was looking for. He got an answer. And we have an answer this morning. We do. We have an answer. Verse 1, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every weight. What is, what is that speaking of? Freedom. Freedom. You begin to lay the weights off. Just like scales. You begin to lay the weights off. And what does it do? Finally, it will get back to zero. Are you tired of carrying something that hasn't worked.
something today that is weighting you down. What is the song that Chris sings? Is there room in your heart you don't want to go in? That you won't even go there, much less somebody else. Every weight as the weight sleeves, freedom comes in. The Bible speaks about lifting up holy hands and even the trees clap their hands. Remember when David was in war how that he was told When you hear the rustling of the mulberry trees, then charge! It wasn't a charge card either. I remember, Brother Bud, I hadn't been coming here long. One night I had a dream. Brother Jackson and I and some others were sitting around the table and there's an older woman sitting there. And there's a window about that, about that big. I was standing up sitting there and in this window I saw some kind of an ugly devil come. He stood right there in that window and he motioned to that woman. And all at once she just slid and went outside that door. Just slivered underneath it. And she come back and she was oh so happy. Then he stands there again. And he begins to motion to me. I said, uh-uh. I can't do that. He didn't stop at that. He didn't stop at my bedding. But after a little bit, I looked at him and I pointed at him. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, leave me alone. And it looked like these paintballs just splattered. That's resistance. And the sin which so easily besets us. That weakness that can be dealt with. Whenever the devil is not going to bother you on something that, is, that, is, that you're not weak in, but what you're weak in Here's what the devil does. He comes against that. But the thing about that is, you can build up resistance about that. How? By resistance. In the name of the Lord. And the sin which 
does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. That's a part of the fruit. The race. We're in a race. But it says run it with patience. Don't get in in a hurry. It's not the one that runs the race the fastest. You go back to the turtle and the hare. A rabbit. <laughs> the turtle was oh so slow. The hare was so fast. But he's so fast that he slept. He didn't know that something was moving up on him because he had all the time in the world. As a sister told me this morning that she didn't get much sleep last night. Didn't go to sleep till maybe four o'clock this morning. I'm not talking about that kind of sleepiness. I'm talking about drowsiness. Whenever it comes to the Word of God... We got a lot of young people here. I was just thinking the other day, some, some of the young people that are 10 years or older were dedicated by Brother Jackson. And it's great to see them become, start becoming or coming to the Lord. I rejoice over that. I may not jump and shout, but inside of me, I feel good about it. Because I had longed for it. I was wondering when it was going to come. Now then, you got, you got some coming along that were after Brother Jackson's death. The Holy Ghost is available unto a six-year-old. I saw a ten-year-old Sunday night sit here just overcome with the Spirit of God. Young people, get interested. Teenagers, get interested. Start praying. Hey, you don't have five more years. Do you listen? Not to me only, but to these other brothers. They're, they're watching for your souls.
looking unto Jesus. The author and, author and the finisher of our faith. He's not only the author of it, he's the finisher of it. It's all tied up in one bundle. And that bundle is Jesus Christ. We don't have to go to some outside source. We don't have to look to some other source. He is our source. I've seen people in the last few weeks I felt to preach on the gifts. Whenever I did, then the fruits. It is not because it's not because of me, but it's because of truth that we can see people. That, it ha that haven't been living for God, come in, Brother Bud. And I would like to encourage you. Pray. Pray till the power comes down to erase unbelief. <clears throat> Who for the joy he was looking to the future who for the joy whenever he was going through his trials, when he went through the crucifixion, he could see the other side for the joy. Why? Because he was a believer. That's the reason why he said, I lay my life down and I will take it up again. Because he knew that that same Holy Ghost that he was living for, that he was preaching unto the people, my body is meat indeed. My blood is drink indeed. That same that same Spirit that preached the Word is that same Spirit that raised Him from the dead. And to my brothers and sisters this morning, that same Holy Ghost that you have today that's inside you will raise you up. Whether you die or whether you live. <laughs> Who for the joy that was set before him. See, he had his mind made up. When he went to the cross, his mind was made up. Because for the joy that was set before him. Otherwise, it would have been in vain. <laughs> Endured the cross. You will endure temptations. You will endure trials. You will go through things, but every one of them will make you stronger if you hold on. You don't like them. I don't like them. I don't get out here and say, devil, bring me another trial. Bring me another test. But you know, when you're in it, when you get out of it, you're going to be stronger. Amen. 
who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame that the cross brought on. They stripped His clothes. That was embarrassing. They could only do so much. Every, every minute that He was on the cross was getting closer to the time of His resurrection. Every day that you're living here on this earth, you're getting ready closer to the day of your redemption. And the end of that, and it's set down. God said, come home, rest, my son. Just sit down on the right hand of the throne of God. That was the ultimate expectation. The Bible teaches us it is joy unspeakable. Full of glory. I've got a I've got a, a slide. Which one's the better? You want this one? You don't have to have it. Or you want this one? For the joy. For the joy He endured the cross. Let us go back in Hebrews 4th chapter. There remaineth therefore the ninth verse, there remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. He is not talking about laying down. He's talking about us resting from the labors of sin and degradation. And the things that have held us back. Is something holding you this morning? Is there a room that you won't go into? And you won't let anyone else in it? Open the door to the Spirit of God. Let Him in that that thing that is standing in your way will be removed. I could just about count this morning the ones that were, were really rejoicing. It was about half of the church. God wants the whole church to rejoice. And then Brother David's dream will happen. I believe that it's getting close. Oh, uh, the amazing thing was that you stepped into it. You just kept stepping. 
you kept going. And here it went from one side of the church to the other one, from the front to the back. I believe he was seeing something that is very close. Would you rather just have the mully grubs? Old country saying. We used to sing the song, Smile a while. Give your face a rest. Raise your hand to the one you love the best. Hey, that brought a smile to everybody. Don't just have to do it this way. Make it automatic. If you, if you this morning got a little bit of joy, take that and, and increase it. Increase it. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And that works into the peace of God. Let's, let's get ready for the days to come. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. That, that is not uh, because he explains it in this way. The people in, in the Old Testament, Moses and them, they never received that rest. If they had gone into the, into the land with the right attitude, then it would have been different. But no, after a while... It's, it's, it's not that way. And by the time that you come down to Jeremiah, there have been 70... He, men he mentions 70 years of Sabbaths. They haven't kept 490 years. And he used that in the book of Daniel. To do something till the time of Christ. It was, they got so busy that they didn't have time for God. And I, after all, God was their strength because He told them, He said, Work six days and the seventh day rest, and I will supply you with enough. For two years. We can't outdo God. For he that that is entered into his rest, he also has seized from his own works as God did from his work, 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 work. That's all this church world knows. Work! They think that because they've taken care of Ebola, Patience that that's going to add to them. Because they built some hospital somewhere. Works, works. They built some school. I don't know of a country 
that they have done all this for that it's really helped them. Because it was an attitude if we just work. That's what the Bible said would be in the last days. A lukewarm church. But it's not lukewarm anymore. It's dead. We're more of a privileged people this morning than sometimes I think we think it, about it. Who else have, has the truth that we have preached unto us? Where, where is it at? I was glad for what Brother Kevin had to say last Sunday night concerning the Branham move. We've even moved on from the last ten years because the Spirit of God don't stop. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty Amen. and there's freedom. Whenever I begin to start to do this, Order not to embarrass the young sister. She saw little birds holding this up. And another young sister sitting back here, she... was looking looking in a mirror and, and and when she looked she saw brother jackson as i was going over this she saw brother jackson taking notes she looked around to see if she was seeing somebody else if there's somebody there and there wasn't I'm not bragging concerning myself this morning, but the Spirit of God is leading us. Amen. When I come in and I saw the number of people that were here this morning, I, I looked at it and I said, Brother Bud, I said, this looked kind of like convention time. I believe that inside some people that there's something happening that, has, it, that there's a pull there telling them that it is the last days. And I'll say this morning, don't wait till Israel gets her land back to make a decision. <coughs> I'll just go ahead and go on. Wait, it won't work. <coughs> Let us labor, therefore, to enter into, his, into that rest, 
Lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. He's talking about the example of unbelief of those children of Israel that had the opportunity to go into the promised land, but because that of their disobedience, always mind back to Egypt. Just like an old frog looking back over their, their, their backside. Remember Lot's wife. One of, one of the shortest verses, uh, verses in the Bible. Remember Lot's wife. But I tell you, there's a lot tied up in that because her mind wasn't right. The children of Israel, the reason they didn't go into the promised land was because of unbelief. It's God. It's great. Sometimes when we feel the leadership of the Lord just pulling us along. Come on, son. Come on, daughter. There's no better feeling than that. And then sometimes He just turns our hands loose. I've noticed. When we had little children, the first steps they take, here they go like this. If they fall, they're going to fall right on their face. But then you give them a month or two and their hands are not up that way anymore because they become more stable. If you walk in this way, Brother, Brother Dwayne, if we walk in this way, we will get more stable. I'm talking to a brother that moved 400 and some miles to be here because he knew that there was truth here. Him and his wife and his daughter. People will turn around to you and say, Oh, you got churches right next to you. Why do you drive so far when you got a church right across the street from you? You've got a building, you don't have a church. Buildings don't make ch churches. This building didn't make faith assembly because faith assembly done had four or three other places before it got here. But, on the other hand, this has been dedicated to God. Amen. <laughs> As Brother Kevin said last Sunday night, there's only two churches in America that I know of. Of course, you know, there's little groups like in Minnesota and so on. But as far as pastors, churches that have preachers, I don't know of any others either. Well, I know of I know of some. Where? Not like that not like that one fella in another state whenever he whenever it was mentioned that so and so preacher preached ninety five percent right. And this preacher said, if he preaches 95% right, he can preach in my church. 
Go ahead. Don't correct nothing. <coughs> For the Word of God is quick. Quick, alive, that's what that means. And powerful. And sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. It gets down to the innermost. And of the joints and marrow. And is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Who's talking to you today? Where's the little small voice? Neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight, but all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him with whom we have to do. He don't forget your labor of love. He don't forget that prayer that you prayed. That day or that night that you knelt by your bedside and you cried or you prayed because of some grief or some sickness or some problem that you was having. Weeping comes for the night. Joy comes in the morning. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession for we have not a high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly. Not demanding. You don't have to demand. Come boldly before the throne of grace. You, these preachers, why I told God, you didn't, you didn't do what I told you to. You little nincompoop. <laughs> little worm of the dust. Think you can turn God's head that way? To turn, to turn his head towards you, so to speak. Be obedient. Be humble. Give your life to him. Your hope, your understanding. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Mercy. And find grace. To help in the time of need. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, that you are so mindful of us, that you give us of your spirit, Father, to guide us and to lead us in the hour in which that we live. 
Forgive us all of our shortcomings and anything, Lord, that would be unlike you. Bless your people, your children. And touch each one, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name, and these people that are be baptized, Lord, may you bless them. May you fill them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, with your Holy Ghost. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, well, I understand it. Brother Kevin is going to be doing the baptism this morning. May the Lord bless our brother. All of you to be baptized. Follow Brother Kevin. He went out through that door there. Does he know what to do when he gets back there? Does he know what to do? Well, uh, David maybe is going to go. With oh, okay. <coughs> I look like a mess. He was there all the time. He was there all the time. Waiting patiently in life. He was there. He was there all the time. He was there all the time.
You can tell when someone is praying. You can tell they bend down on their knees. You can tell when they start to reach heaven. God hears and He answers their plea. Oh, you can tell when someone is praying. Oh, you can tell. church family has prayer just for him. In the morning, the child starts his play. Someone has reached
He's going to bring me out of the desert where it's so dusty and dry. He's going to bring me out of the desert and I'll leave me here to die. He's going to take me where the water is flowing, so full and so free. He's going to bring me out of the desert, set my feet where they ought to be. Full of cloud by day and a fire by night, the Lord, He led them on their way, singing and praising very name as they walk that very day for oh, with man I he defeat them for oh, every single day said don't store up for tomorrow but you will fill your soul today oh he's gonna bring me out of the desert where it's so dusty and dry he's gonna bring me out of the desert and I'll leave me here to die He's gonna take me where the water is flowing, so full and so free. He's gonna take me out of the desert, set my feet where they ought to be. Well, so long I have stood here with sand up to my knees, praying and trusting, Lord, I beg you, oh, please send me relief. Won't you show me a sign from heaven? That you've not forgotten me Bring me out of the sandy desert To the garden of Eden I see Oh, he's gonna bring me out of the desert Where it's so dusty and dry He's gonna bring me out of the desert And I'll leave me here to die He's gonna bring me to the water is flowing So cool and so free He's gonna bring me out of the desert Set my feet where they ought to be Will a cloud by day and a fire by night, the Lord, He led them on their way, singing and praising His very name as they walked that very day. Oh, with manna He did feed them every single day. Said, don't store up for tomorrow, but joyfully fill your souls today. Oh, He's going to bring me out of the desert where it's so dusty and dry. He's going to bring me out and not leave me here to die He's gonna take me where the water is flowing So full and so free He's gonna bring me out of the desert Set my feet where they ought to be Oh, so long I have stood here With sand up to my knees Praying and trusting, Lord, I beg you Lord, please send me relief won't you show me a sign from heaven that you've not forgotten me? Bring me out of this sandy desert to the Garden of Eden I see. Oh, he's going to bring me out of the desert where it's so dusty and dry. He's going to bring me out of the desert and not leave me here to die. He's going to take me where the water is flowing, so full and so free. He's going to bring me the desert, set my feet where they ought to be, oh, he's gonna bring me out of the desert, where it's so dusty and dry, he's gonna bring me out of the desert, and I'll leave me here to die, he's gonna take me where the water is flowing, so full and so free, he's gonna bring me out of the desert, set my feet where they ought to be. This road I'll walk is straight and narrow, but it leads to a better home. It was laid by Christ one day at Calvary while I suffered all alone. Now this road may lean over many high mountains and valleys dark and low. But I'll walk each day with the sweet assurance that I'll safely reach my goal ahead. There is joy and gladness and rest for my weary soul ahead. There is peace and contentment. Everybody will be happy and whole. You know that I'll be at home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, still I know what 
flies ahead Now on this road I get so weary And often my feet will stray But a gentle hand still leads me onward Helps me find my way As I climb each hill And I cross each valley by his hand I'm daily led No, I won't look back I'm gonna keep right on a walking Cause I know what lies ahead Ahead There is joy and gladness And rest for my weary soul Ahead There is peace and contentment Everybody will be happy and old Know that I'll be at home with Jesus where tears will never be shed. Though so often this road gets rough and rocky, shall I know what lies ahead. excited brother Alan. Amen. This is a blessing. Praise the Lord. I appreciate my brother Ben. Everyone knows who this is. Brother Ben Polston. It's Sister Polston's son. And I know that my brother is very sincere. I know that he is wanting the Lord to fill him and he wants to commit his life totally unto the Lord. Amen. I'm just appreciating my brother this morning so much. He's communicated with me. He's emailed and texted me. And I know what a desire he has in his heart to live for the Lord. And I just pray this morning that God will just baptize him with the Holy Ghost. And give him the desires of his heart this morning. Amen. It's wonderful to see all these children lined up. I've never seen it from this angle before, but it's a blessing. Hallelujah. I look back there behind us today, and there's almost an entire family, and I thought, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How Sister Tammy's life has changed in the last few days. Amen. I believe the move is on, brother, sister, for the bride. Something's going on at Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Glory! Hallelujah! Amen. Let us pray for our brother this morning. Amen. That God will fill him up this morning. Heavenly Father, Father, you see my brother that he stands here, Lord. Lord, that he's repented of all of his sins. Father, he looks unto you this morning, following as the scriptures tell us uh, that we should repent uh, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ uh, for the remission of our sins. Uh, Oh, Father, we stand here this morning uh, as we put our brother, uh, Lord, into this watery grave. Uh, Oh, God, I pray uh, that as he comes out, Lord, uh, Lord, that you will fill him uh, with thy Holy Spirit. Uh, Baptize him, Lord, with the Holy Ghost. Uh, And as he walks forward, uh, from this day forward, uh, Lord, may thy Spirit lead and guide him. Uh, May you feel, may he feel, Lord, uh, you with him day by day. Uh, And we commit him now, Lord, into your keeping and to your hands. And we ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God, Brother Ben. Wow, this is my first time. I'm almost as lost as just about anybody here knowing what to do. They told me you need to hold on my hand. Amen. So, brother, we baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. For the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. 
Glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. This is Brother Adam Holston. This is Brother Sister um, Angie's, or Sister Tammy's son. It's hard to keep it all straight this morning. I just hope you bear with me. But uh, Brother Adam feels the need. The Lord has dealt with his heart. And he feels the need to be baptized this morning. Hallelujah. Hey. I talked to him just a little bit. He said I was okay. Till this morning he started getting a little I started getting a little bit nervous. I said, I know that feeling. Because when I came in this morning, Brother Bud said, You're doing the baptism baptizing today. And I said, So I know what you're feeling just a little bit. But we appreciate our brother this morning. And how he's moving amongst the people. Hey. And his spirit is calling them in. I just appreciate the Lord. I appreciate you, Brother Adam. And I believe God's going to do something for you. I believe he's going to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Hey. Let us look unto the Lord and pray. Almighty God. Heavenly Father. You see my brother as we stand here today. Father, you see his heart, his honest heart as he stands here. Father, he has repented of his sins. He's looking unto you this morning. Father, he's asking that you would, Lord, fill him with your Holy Spirit. And Father, we commit him to you. We ask that you would have your way, Lord, in his life. May he go forth from this watery grave as a testimony unto you, Lord, and a witness unto your mercy and grace. Father, we commit him unto you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Grab a hold of my hands right there. Brother Adam, according to the scriptures, we now baptize you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Definitely, it's going to be different. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's dealing with the young hearts too. Amen. Amen. This is little Maddie Polston. And this is Sister Angie's daughter. Sister Polston's granddaughter. And she feels the need to be baptized this morning. <laughs> this is wonderful. The greatest thing that could happen to any soul. Hey. To be baptized. Repent of your sins and be baptized and filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Brother, sister, sealed until the day of your redemption. Satan can't take it away. Let's pray for our little sister this morning. Heavenly Father, you see our little sister Maddie stands here, Lord. And she has felt that tug upon her heart. Father, she knows that you have dealt with her. And Father, she stands here in a repentant state. Father, she desires that you would move upon her and fill her with your spirit. Father, she commits her life unto you wholly. Asking, Father, that you will lead and guide her for the remainder of her days. That she would be a light that would shine for you to those that would be around her. Father, we just ask that you will fill her with your spirit. 
And we commit her to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sister Maddie, according to the scriptures now, I baptize you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Hallelujah. 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 All right, this is Sister Angie Polston, Sister Polston's daughter in law. And I know she's been coming to Faith Assembly for many years. And I appreciate my sister, she's always been an example. But she feels the need to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for whatever reason that is between her and the Lord. For us, we should be happy. And I just thank the Lord for my sister this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you see our sister that stands here in this watery grave. Lord, she feels the need to be baptized. Father, you know what she feels in her heart. And I just pray, Lord, that you will overshadow her with thy spirit. Father, if there's any doubt in her mind that this, from this day forward, that that doubt will be gone. That your spirit will overshadow her and fill her with the Holy Ghost. And I just pray from this day forward, that she will feel that satisfaction, Lord, in her heart and soul. Yes. May, Father, every day she walks this earth, she feel thy presence and your spirit upon her. And yes. we commit her to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Hey. All right. Sister Angie, I now baptize you. According to the scriptures, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I was just reading in the book of Acts just a while ago. And uh, it says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were in one accord and in one mind. Brother, sister, I feel that this morning very strongly. I feel it coming upon the church and people are desiring it. This is Sister Tammy Polston. Just a few weeks ago, her husband Tim was baptized. We praise the Lord for that. God is doing a work. Sister, you're very blessed. I just said, maybe you heard me. Your life has changed greatly in the last few weeks. God is hearing and answering prayer. Amen. Let us pray for our sister this morning. Heavenly Father, you see my dear sister that stands here. Father, she feels the need also within her heart to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And Father, we question not what this is for or what it's about. 
but it's, uh, it is between you and our sister. Father, I just pray for her today, and I ask that you would bless her, that you would fill her with your spirit, and that you would overshadow her life and make your presence so known unto her. May you lead her and guide her from this day forward, and may she give all honor, glory, and praise unto you, for we commit her now into your hands, in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Sister Tammy, just hold on to my wrist there. I now baptize you according to the scriptures as we've been instructed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Amen. knows Sister Tabitha. We en enjoy her singing and her what she does for the Lord here in the assembly. And she too feels the need to be baptized. In the name of Jesus Christ, let us look unto our Heavenly Father. Precious Lord, Heavenly Father, you see our Sister Tabitha that stands here this morning. Father, you see her heart, and Father, you know why she stands here today. I pray, Father, that you would just come in and bless her and anoint, Lord, her life. May you fill her with your Holy Spirit. And Father, may whatever there is that is in her mind, maybe there is doubt that Satan has put there. But Father, may this all be removed and wiped away. And may she trust in you. And walk with you each and every day of her life. We commit her, Father, into your hands. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sister Tabitha, now according as we've been instructed in the scriptures, we baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. When you said family, that's. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sister Amanda Holston. Everyone knows our sister. Brother Larry's granddaughter, married to Brother Ben that was just uh, baptized a few moments ago. And um, I know just recently they moved back up from Kentucky to Indiana. And as our sister gave her testimony the other day, and she's thankful that they're able to be closer to where they can come to the services more often, and I appreciate that also. And it's a time that we all need to be getting ready, assembling ourselves together as much as possible is very important. Sister Amanda, I appreciate you, Mother Ben. I believe the Lord is going to bless you in a mighty way. Let's pray to God on behalf of our sister. Heavenly Father, precious Lord, you see our dear sister as she stands here, Lord, about to be baptized in this watery grave. She feels the need in her heart, Lord, to be baptized. And Father, we just pray that you will come and fill her with your spirit, that you will overshadow her life, that you will lead and guide our sister. And Father, that she will be a vessel that you can use 
and a light that will shine forth unto those that will be around her. That they will know that our sister, there's something about her that is different. May you strengthen her in the days that lie ahead, we pray. And we commit her to you in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Sister Amanda, just put your hand under here like that. And hold to my wrist. Now, Sister Amanda, according to Acts 2.38 and all of the scriptures, how we know that we've been commanded to baptize for the remission of sins in Jesus Christ's name. I now baptize you for the remission of your sins in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. thy life and the things that has plagued thy body. I say commit thyself wholly unto me this day and I shall bless thy home and one day not far ahead my daughter thou shall be made whole thus saith the hey. Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory. Hallelujah. Sister, this is Sister Julia Ellis, and everyone knows Sister Julia. We love and appreciate our sister. She's a great help here in the church, in the kitchen, and we just appreciate her for everything that she does. And I know that Sister Julia is sincere. And I just pray that the Lord will take away all the doubt that Satan wants to bring against the children of God, and especially my sister. Sister Julia, my prayer and my desire that when you leave this pool today, there will be no more doubt. And that you will know of a surety that you're a child of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you see our sister that stands here. Father, she has an honest heart and stands here before you. She is repented, Lord, and she is looking for the satisfaction, Lord, in her heart and soul that she is a child of God. Only you can give that. And Father, I pray that as she is baptized in this watery grave and comes forth, that you will renew her, Father, with thy spirit, that she will know beyond the shadow of a doubt that she is your child. And Father, I pray as she goes forth for the remainder of her days that she will feel your spirit and your presence with her each and every day. And I now commit her into your hands, Father, and ask that you would keep her in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Sister Julia, according to Acts 2.38 and all of the other scriptures throughout the Word of God, I now baptize you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of all of your sins. Amen. Hallelujah.
Anyone else? I believe he's enjoyed that, don't you? <laughs> well, this is a part of the ministry, isn't it? Thank you, Brother Kevin. I know I've been sealed till the day of redemption. One day Jesus will come and he'll take me away, and forever I'll live in his beautiful presence. I'm gonna live with the same glory someday well my life was all a wreck with burdens and care I had no one to comfort my poor soul within as I drifted far on life's stormy sea my life was all dark and gloomy for me. One day I heard of a man who died on the cross to save a sin sick soul in a world that was lost. One day I called on Jesus. His precious blood covered me And He lifted my burdens And He set me free Now I know I've been sealed Till the day of redemption One day Jesus will come And He'll take me away forever I live in his beautiful presence I'm gonna live with the saints in glory someday one day I heard of a man who died on the cross to save a sin sick soul One day I called on Jesus, His blood covered me, and He lifted my burdens, and He set me free. And now I know I've been sealed, sealed, sealed till the day of redemption. One day Jesus will come and he'll take me away and forever I'll live in his beautiful presence. I'm gonna live with the same in glory someday. Oh, I know I've been sealed, sealed, sealed till the day of redemption. One day and he'll take me away and forever I'll live in his beautiful presence I'm gonna live with the same in glory
joy someday. Thank you, Brother David. Uh, well, let us remember their service tonight. Come back and be praying for all of the saints of God that stand in need of a touch from prayer. Brother David Spurlock, will you dismiss us in prayer?